I hate average. Like I had a vision for this truck <laughs> for over four years before I actually went and purchased it. When you got the keys, what was that feeling? When your dreams are coming true in front of your very eyes, mm -hmm. you don't realize it. Is it legal to have that big of a truck? Dude, anything that's cool, they pretty much have a problem with here in general. <laughs> <laughs> One day I picked up the camera, I was like, I'm gonna try vlogging. There was no other option in my mind. I'm like, almost like delusional optimism, but it's not even delusional because it's, it's gonna happen. Sometimes you just gotta say, watch me. Yep. and then do the work and start showing the actual results. What's your goal personally? To become the absolute best possible version of Mitch in every metric, physical, financial, spiritual. Are you there yet? That's a very good question, man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Two for Eyes podcast, aka the number one podcast in Winnipeg, where we document the rise and start of Winnipeg's talent and personalities. Today, we have a motivational one because we sit down with Mitch Matthews, aka the Gold Cummings on Instagram, to talk about his business and his insane viral truck. I'm talking big wheels, gold plated, literally the biggest, baddest machine that you've ever seen, and the motivation and the inspiration it took to get that, as well as the business behind it. We dive into the mindset of what it takes to be a man, to be to chase your dreams, to just be so hungry and have that delusional optimism that nobody else believes in you. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. I thank you everyone for tuning in every week. And as always, enjoy the episode. See you next week. Mitch, thanks so much for coming on the show, bro. Of course, brother. Uh, before, I gotta ask the truck, man. I gotta ask. Okay, that shit's a beast. She's a beast of, course, of a truck, bro. a beast. Okay, so I'm gonna throw up some pictures for, for the audience. Yeah, but like, gotta get the B-roll. Uh, but can you walk me through what that truck is? Like, just start to finish, like what is that truck? Like what type of truck? Type of truck, what you did to it, why does it look the way that it looks? Easy, bro. So it's a 2017 <laughs> Ram 3500. It's got a Cummins engine in it, obviously a diesel. Mm -hmm. And dude, I just built, I bought that thing actually last year in April, just wow. bone stock off the lot. Okay. And I had, dude, it goes back though. It goes back. Let's like like I had it. a vision for this truck uh -huh. for over four years before I actually went and purchased it. Okay. So fast forward four years ago, uh -huh. I literally just sat down and I was like, okay, hey, what is the craziest possible, like craziest truck I could ever build? Mm -hmm. And so I, I wrote out each little modification, right? Yeah, Planned yeah. it out. And then I found a graphic designer online. I sent him the list. I'm like, can you make an animation of this or like a rendering of this? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, bro, I got you. So he made it. I got it. I was like, wow, this is literally my dream truck. So I printed it out, put a poster in my room, put a poster in my office. Mm -hmm. And then every day, bro, just visualized that shit, looked at that shit. I would literally picture it sitting in my driveway. I would picture what it would be like driving the truck, like very... Wow very specific situations, you know? Hmm. Try to get a sensory rich experience kind of thing. Yeah. And then, long story short, grinding my ass off four years and then finally it was time to get it mm -hmm. and bought it and then we built it up to pretty much what it looks like today in just over 60 days. So wow. we hustled it out quick. Did you know that that was the truck? Like, how much did you buy the truck off of the lot for? I was 70K after taxes off the lot. Okay, not brand new. No. Right? No, no. I had some miles on it? Yeah, it had like, yeah. like 100,000 kilometers, okay. so pretty young. But but why specifically that truck? Like, why not a Ford F-150 or a, another, you know? That's uh, a good question, man. It's a good question. I have always had Dodge. Really? Okay. Just, that's what I had before. Mm -hmm. And I was always like, all right, I'm going to get a diesel Dodge. Yeah. yeah. Day, you know? Okay. And then that, that just caught your eye, like, at the, at the right time, at the right moment, and you were like, okay, let's make this decision? Exactly, bro. Mm. 100%. So what was the transition from, okay, you have the picture, to now I'm going to buy buy it? Like, what, what were you waiting on for, for that to, to happen? Well, I mean, just like a lot of us in life, we're waiting on the right time to the do right. shit, which yeah. doesn't actually exist, right? And I actually had no plans to do that last year at all. Really? Okay. And then the truck I had before that, the transmission went and the engine mm -hmm. got messed up at the same time. Okay. So I was like, all right. I think this is a sign. It's finally time to do this, even though it seems a little bit early. Mm -hmm. It's always going to seem early. You know, that's just how it is in life. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I just went ahead and did it, bro. Mm -hmm. When you got the keys, what was that feeling? It was pretty crazy, man. You know, it's, it's the same thing if anybody out there has an idea in their head of what their dream vehicle would be. Just yeah. picture actually getting your dream vehicle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously it wasn't a dream vehicle when I stepped in it for the first time because it wasn't customized but yeah. i had that vision locked you knew. in tight man mm -hmm. i knew exactly what it was going to be and, and nobody else did but yeah, yeah wow 
Yeah, I, I, I've, I've talked about this on the show so many times, but my, my dream car is a Lamborghini, and it's a green one. What on kind? Uh, Lamborghini Aventador. Nice. And I, I have a, I have, it's like I have a poster around that wall. I have like small little mock-ups of the exact same car. Nice guy, and I've bro. Pictured, pictured it so many times. Bro, once you finally get your dream vehicle, yeah. you definitely shouldn't be scared of that because as soon as you get your dream vehicle, then it just opens up to the next thing, bro. It's, it's always going to be the next thing in life, right? Like yeah. this journey isn't just, there's not just an end where you're like, okay, I got my dream car and now I'm just, this is it. <laughs> there's always going to be something else. So mm -hmm. after you get your dream car, Maybe you're gonna want to change the color of it. You mm -hmm. know, maybe you're gonna want to do something else with it, or maybe you're gonna want to just. There's gonna be something else gotcha. after it, and there has to be something else. You know, mm -hmm. do you have a what now moment though? A period of time. So, uh, athletes use this, for example, like their entire life they they want to win a championship, NFL championship, NBA championship. Yeah. And as soon as they get it, the reason for all their hard work has now been accomplished. And now so the only next thing is, okay, maybe another championship or maybe something else, but there's a brief moment of time when they have that realization of like, I did this, this is me, I've achieved my goal. And then so as great as is it to be like, come on, move to the next thing, you gotta sit back and reflect and be like, yo, bro, five-year-old me was wanting this and I've yeah. done it before him. And like, did you have that moment of realization? You know what, man? I really tried to just take a step back during the process and realize what was happening because when your dreams are coming true in front of your very eyes, mm -hmm. you don't realize it. It doesn't feel like how you would think it feels like, right? Yeah. Because life just happens. Mm -hmm. And it's not until you really take a step back and change your whole perspective of what's going on that you can really see it for what it is. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I did a good job of doing that in the process and especially after the fact and dude there's been so many freaking times where i just will stand by the truck and i will just sit there in the moment and really look at it and think of what it is because mm. the thing i hate the most is when you get used to something right i never want to get used to having that truck even when i'm driving it every day mm -hmm. and in when i was in miami driving it every day freely and everything like that i was like damn I'm kind of getting used to this truck. It just seems normal. Like I've driven every day for months now, right? Yeah. So I literally just, you know, go to the beach with it and just dedicate that time to just change your perspective and just really look at it and just take it in and think of, think of the dream, think of the journey and where you're at now. And you have to reflect, man, because we're we're all so bad at as soon as we accomplish something, it's like, okay, what's next? On to the next. Just yeah. Put it in the past. It's like no, you have to reflect and you have to take energy and inspiration from that journey and what you've already accomplished to be able to go do bigger and greater things next. Mm -hmm. What does that reflection journey look like for you? Dude, it all starts from the beginning, just like I told you, man. When I had the vision and I wrote down on a piece of paper all the modifications, I would literally walk through kind of the whole process of just like sitting in my house, writing out that list, thinking back to all the visualizations that I had and brought myself through of what it would be like having that truck finally. Mm. And then just reflecting on the build processes, everything I had to do to make that happen. And then all of a sudden I'll just look at the truck and be like, boom, full circle moment, here it is. You know, it's crazy, bro, it's, it's <laughs> insane. And you know, it doesn't matter what anybody says about materialistic things because unless they've actually done something very significant and got something that's massive, massive to themselves, material, mm -hmm. materialistically, then they just, they can't speak upon it, you know? Mm. If you're driving a Honda Civic and he's like, oh, you can't be like that, blah, blah, blah. Irrelevant, yeah. bro. Of course. The, the whole idea of you drawing things out and them coming to fruition, you've done that in other aspects of your life as well. Talk about the content world and, and the subscriber plaque of 100K. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. can you break that story down? Bro, that's another thing, you know? When you, you got to impress something in your subconscious mind, first of all, right? Mm -hmm. That's like step number one. And then step number two, which most people suck so bad at, mm -hmm. is actually genuinely believing that you can accomplish set goal. Because we're all so bad at imposing self-limitation upon ourselves. Correct. And, yeah. you know, you look around yourself, people are average for the most part, doing average things, and it just seems normal to fall in line with that. So when you try to think really big and do something extraordinary, you're going way out of what's normal, what's around you. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's super, you gotta bring yourself to somewhere where not a lot of people are going, you know, and just kind of accept the fact that whatever you're doing is, is gonna be exceptional. Mm -hmm.
was your question? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it all it, the the hundred hundred k sub subscribers like oh, right. it, it comes down to the idea that you had a dream and you wrote it down and then you continuously work towards it, right? Over and over and over again. Yeah. I'm curious to see where this mindset comes from because a lot of people will look and say, "Man, that guy's successful. That guy's got what he wants. He achieved his goal. He worked incredibly fucking hard to, to get it." But I also want that. But there's something in everyone of the reason why we do something. Mm -hmm. So what is your reason for why? Where does this drive come from? Yeah, that's a good question, man. There's there's definitely different layers to it. Mm -hmm. But I think the primary basis is just to be exceptional in life. I hate average. Like, I have a tattoo that says fuck average on my arm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so when I think of somebody going through life and just going through the paces and doing what everybody else does, I hate that. I hate the idea of being the same as everybody else and doing the same thing as everybody else. Mm. So it kind of just, what was really big for me is one day I kind of just sat back. I'm like, all right, if I could do anything every day with my time, and money was completely taken care of. Money was not even the question. All. What would I spend my time actually doing? Mm. And I'm like, epic shit, obviously, mm. exciting things. And I love trucks. Trucks has always been a passion to me, so it's kind of just doing cool shit and fun shit around trucks. That was kind of my ideal, I guess, day-to-day -day vision. Mm -hmm. And with YouTube, with that as a vehicle of income and success, that allowed me to do that every single day and grow wealth and a community and build influence all at the same time. So it was almost like the perfect thing for what I wanted to spend my time doing. Mm. Did you always have this idea of like fuck average? Like when you were a kid, were, were, were you always just kind of everyone's going this way? I want to do something this way. What, what were your like aspirations as a, a young Mitch? Yeah, dude. I mean, it started early because really? like I was mentioning. How early? How early? Dude, if I was actually to put an age on it. Because you said you said before we were start recording, you were doing backflips and and putting that stuff just on like on on content as well. So content's always kind of been in in your realm, but in terms of taking that step, almost like okay, this is real, or I'm gonna put a lot more effort than the average person into this. Yeah, I would say probably around junior high, like grade eight, grade seven, kind of thing. And what made that spark happen? Do you remember? Man, I just remember looking at how all these kids were playing sports, doing hockey and everything like that, and it just didn't resonate with me. I had no interest in playing sports, and it seems like that was kind of like the normal thing at that age, right? Yeah. That's just what kids would do. And I didn't like it. I wasn't interested in it at all, and I just found my own little niche, I guess you could say, doing, doing flips in the backyard and just trying to learn crazy shit and filming it and putting it on the internet. It was just totally different from the start. So, yeah, yeah just... Don't don't have the interest to do what everyone else is doing, you know. Mm. Do you remember the first like dopamine hit that you got from like posting something, like first video that either went oh. viral or maybe the first like you got on it? Or like, there's always like a moment where it's like, oh, somebody commented this, like. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny that you asked that because I would never have traced back in my memory to think of this. Yeah. But I remember the first YouTube video I ever posted that got a thousand views. Yeah. And when it hit a thousand views, that was a big freaking Hell deal yeah. to me, bro. I think I had like probably three hundred subscribers. And what was that video? It was uh, <laughs> it was a big compilation I made for the entire summer of all like the craziest flips I did that year, bro. <laughs> Let's That's, go. I literally forgot that even existed until you just asked me. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> and then, and then does that motivate you even more? Correct? Like you're like shit. I made it. Did you think you made it at that point? A thousand views, on <laughs> dude. How could I even think? That I made it at that point. A thousand views is so insignificant. <laughs> yeah, but but for three hundred subscriber, Mitch, that's a lot. You're right, bro. For You're 300 right. Three hundred subscriber, Mitch, that's a lot. That's insane, dude. <laughs> to even think about that, that's wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was definitely the first time from, Damn. from I guess views and content where I was yeah. like, jacked right up about it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, we we had a recent uh, a DJ on the show and world renowned DJs performed and he told us a story and I'm gonna show this because you might you, I think you'll like it he posted his first little like mix on thing he was young and he got a fire emoji one fire emoji and he went running around his house being like mom I made it and like 10 years later he's <laughs> the biggest dude ever. I love that man that like, is so small cool small stories like that yeah like whether they whether you take anything from that I just like like the idea of it may not it's so insignificant to you now but at that moment, it was the biggest thing in the world. Oh, it's so true, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We all have those little milestones, you know. Mm -hmm. Now moving forward, let's let's so after after the flips and after the the initial, you know, thousand views on the 
the the video what was the transition like into the world of of yourself the world of the golden comings and mitch as, as a whole um did the business come first what kind of what's the whole story here yeah so the whole story starts out with me just really wanting a lifted truck bad okay that was probably around grade nine yeah, it was around grade nine ish. Before the license, of course. Yes, exactly. Where I was kind of really just starting to eye up lifted trucks and be like, dude, if I could just have a lifted truck and drive a lifted truck around, that'd be the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. That would be so much fun to have one of those, yeah. you know? So then I finally got my first truck in, I think it was the summer, like after grade 10. Got you. And I got my first truck, and it was actually willed to me from my grandfather. And that was actually the truck I had outside today. So it's Kendra. Yeah. yeah the, Can we talk about the story of Kendra? Bro. <laughs> I know the, we talked briefly about it, but I think people need to hear it. This is a hilarious story, bro. Oh, my God. Yeah, so my first truck I named Kendra mm -hmm. because, lo and behold, dude, what? how old was I even when this happened? I don't even know how old I was. It was probably like grade 7, grade 8. For my birthday, one of my buddies was like, bro, Look what I got. You're never going to believe what I got. He pulls out a Playboy magazine. And you know when you're that young, you're like, oh, shit, bro. That's crazy. Where'd you even get that, you know? Yeah. So I was like, this is fucking cool, man. And on the cover of this Playboy magazine was this blonde-haired woman named Kendra Wilkinson. Okay. I think that's her last name. And I was like, dude, this, this is like my dream girl. You know, being a 12-year-old boy, I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. So when I got my truck, I was so jacked up about getting my truck. You know, I'm like... I'm going to name it Kendra. It just seems like a suit and things. So sweet. That's so sweet. <laughs> Bro, yeah, I don't even think porno magazines are a thing nowadays, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we got to find this Kendra girl. <laughs> we gotta... Bro, she's probably all, like, old and washed up now, you know? <laughs> yeah, hey, fair. I should probably find her and take her for a ride in the Golden Cummins, though. That would be a full That's circle a full moment. Circle. 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, bro, so... So you get the first truck. Got the stock truck yeah. and slowly just started doing modifications to it. Very, very slow. I was just broke as shit. On your own? Yeah, yeah just, okay. just in the driveway. Like, bro, grab plastic up from Canadian Tire and, like, paint the bumper type shit, you know? Okay. Just started out like that and just doing little thing by little thing. Mm -hmm. And then finally got a lift kit and just slowly built that truck up, man. And I don't even know how many years, probably like five years later, it was sitting with a, an average lift. Like an eight inch lift on 37s is kind of, for in Manitoba, that's like, okay, yeah, you got a decent lift truck kind of thing, right? Yeah. So then that's where it was at. And after the truck was built, I, I would kind of go off roading with it on my own time just for fun, you know, just, just for shits and giggles. Mm -hmm. And one day I picked up the camera, I was like, I'm going to try vlogging. Mm -hmm. So I started vlogging in my house. I'm like, today we're going to go drive the truck in the snow. Yeah. So I was filming the truck, introducing it to the channel and everything like that. Went out in the snow, got stuck, got buried, had a good time. And then I posted on YouTube and it had like 200 views after a week, I think. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I remember I was in university at the time. I only did like a year in university because it's trash. But I looked at my phone, I'm like, whoa, what the hell's happening here? This video is like getting views quick. And the next thing I knew, this video was at 100,000 views. And that was my first ever 100,000 view video, which was the first video I ever posted on my truck. <laughs> kind of ironically, you know, it was like almost meant to be. Yeah. But yeah, I remember seeing that thing take off and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. So next weekend, I'm like, call buddy. I'm like, dude, we got to go off roading again Good with the job. truck. Yeah. This is working, you know, we got to keep doing this. <laughs> So then the next video got like 10,000, didn't do as good, but kind of just kept on pumping out content with the truck ever since that first video took off. Mm -hmm. And then after about a year and a half or so, channel was doing pretty good. I went from 1,000 subscribers to 35,000. And yeah, I had a big audience following me and everything like that. And then one of my buddies is like, dude, like, why aren't you selling anything to your audience? Mm. And I was like, you know what? That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. So I made these stickers and they said adrenaline off-road on them and they said like dodge ram fam and stuff like that you know <laughs> and then i made these t-shirts as well that said uh life's too short for no mods and just like <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff you know nice. just stuff i resonated with at the yeah, time of course and dude we were doing like a little bit of sales online nothing crazy at all like mm -hmm. if i made a couple hundred bucks in the month i was stoked kind of thing from it you know yeah and then eventually i was like all right i need a offer something bigger to my audience you know mm. and I thought what is the what is the best bang for your buck product that can really transform the look of a vehicle and I was like accent lighting mm -hmm. huge 
and there's these things called rock lights. They go underneath the vehicle, they light everything up, you can change colors and shit, it looks cool. Cool. So I started sourcing a bunch of different products, trying to find the best thing. The thing that really was just the best quality possible. And then what I would do is I would install the products on my truck, mm -hmm. go off road with it, mm -hmm. and review the product for myself. Right. And that's where adrenaline off road comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, the product line, the, the whole company that has all these products now is called Adrenaline Off Road because I literally just went off roading with these products to test them. Mm. And of course, I made YouTube videos of that. Yeah. My audience saw that. So when I was like, all right, guys, we're launching rock lights. You can go get them from my website. Yeah. Then that's how I got my first customers was organically from my YouTube channel. That's, that's yeah, that's very smart and, and clever in, in the sense that if you have a dedicated, almost like a niche audience, you would say, right? Exactly. Uh, at that time. And, and dedicated and loyal too, I would assume. Absolutely. Right? Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not a huge uh, Dodge uh, Ram truck connoisseur, but I, I can imagine if, if someone has a Dodge truck where they want to do something similar, that could be like an inspiration and use your videos as a way to, you know, install them themselves or figure, it, figure out a way. Did you have any inspirations when you started in terms of who or a certain type of truck or a certain person or a certain way that the truck looked or were you, what got you into this like lifted truck area? man it's a good question i remember my mom showing me this picture of me when i was probably like three years old and i was standing with a big lifted square body chevy man so it's apparently okay. but you know what driving the go the big golden cummins around these days yeah I look at how these kids react, bro, and it's just the most genuine, authentic thing. There's something within little boys that when they see a big truck, yep. they're just like, they love it. Mm -hmm. They love it, dude. I don't know what it is. Next it's like <laughs> it's, it's like hardwired into so many kids, you know? Mm -hmm. So I guess I was just like that as well. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of just one of those things I always just loved. And again, going back to the whole fuck average thing, mm -hmm. you know, if I could have a cool lifted truck, of course I want to do that. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. like why not have some stock ass <laughs> truck? Fuck that shit. <laughs> you mentioned you did a, a a year at university. Yeah. What what was the decision of like either dropping out and first going into that? Bro, university is so stupid for probably like ninety percent of the time, in my opinion. And sure. it's it's so funny. I'm like, all right, I want to go into kinesiology. Okay. First year university, they're like, okay, you got to take mythology. <laughs> you got to take Aboriginal studies. You got to take Psycho uh, not psychology, you gotta take chemistry, like yep. it had nothing to do. And then one of the courses was kinesiology related. I'm like, this is so stupid. Mm -hmm. What a waste of my time. You know what I mean? Why'd you go into it in the first place? I wanted to be a sports medicine doctor. Cool. Originally. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought I wanted to do anyways. Okay. Back when I graduated, so mm -hmm. and that was kind of the goal. And then all of a sudden everything I was doing with my everyday life had nothing to do with that. Yeah. I'm like, this just seems so silly to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I hated it. I hated every day of it, and I'm, one day I just called my mom. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm uh, I'm dropping out of university. Mm -hmm. I hate this." And she's like, "Are you sure?" I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "All right." <laughs> and then you had to figure it out. Was everything in sort of in play at that time? What what was it? Were you scared to make that jump? Obviously, you're gonna figure it out regardless. Like the, the couple minutes I'm talking, I like you put anything in front of you, you're gonna run through them anyway. Yeah. Um, but like, was there a sort of like a hesitation of like, okay, you know, a lot of people are going this way. I know I'm gonna figure it out but there is the comfortability there. Yeah, right, there's a the whole comfort thing, but mm -hmm. dude, I hated university so much. Yeah. There was no other option in my mind. Not I'm like, true. this is not for me. Every fiber of my being is telling me that this is the wrong path for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, if everyone's going that way, yeah. of course I wanna go the other way anyway. It's just how I'm wired. Yeah. But yeah, at the time, there wasn't really much going, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I was making the YouTube videos still, yeah. but I didn't have what was I doing? Oh yeah, I remember sitting there one day and I was researching t-shirt businesses. Mm -hmm. I was like trying to think if I could sell t-shirts and make a business out of that and, and just dip out of school. But no, that was right at the beginning of starting the YouTube video. So I was probably making like $100 a month ad revenue, if that, Yeah. and had no products being sold or anything Damn. at that time yet. Mm -hmm. So it was really, there was really nothing in motion mm -hmm. yet, you know? And, and what was the grind like to get it to the point where, um, before the business started, but um, the audience to be built, that grind from 1,000 to 35,000, what was that grind like? That grind is like putting out the best possible YouTube video once a week, every single week for a year and a half, mm. and not missing a week. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. 
And were you filming everything, coming up with ideas all by yourself, and, and filming and editing everything by yourself? That is what was the catalyst for initially having the truck go viral, is because I filmed every time I got pulled over, right? Again, smart as fuck. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and what was it? It was about a month after I had gotten pulled over is when I started releasing these videos, dude. Yeah. And I remember I was in Toronto for my buddy's bodybuilding competition. I looked at my TikTok. And I'm like, dude, holy shit, this video's at a million views all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is crazy. And all of a sudden, two days later, it was at 4 million views. I'm like, okay, now I have to post every video I've gotten pulled over as different episodes, you yeah. know? And I had a couple other ones hit, mm -hmm. and that was kind of the, the big start of it all in creating the content. And it kind of shifted my perspective on what it could be and how I could leverage the content to make the truck go viral. Mm -hmm. Is it, I, I don't know the regulations here, but like, is it legal to have that big of a truck? Like, what's the, what's the modif, like, what's... What's wrong with it? No, like yeah, I, I don't even know how to phrase the question here, but like in terms of how big can you go? And, like, wait, what's the rules here? What's the rules look like in terms of how much you can modify a vehicle? Right, so I did try to do my due diligence as much as possible before having the truck. You know, mm -hmm. I was phoning MPI, I was phoning the, I was reading the Manitoba Highway Traffic <laughs> Act, which is a bunch of hidden bullshit anyways, yeah. but I was trying to figure it out. So the big thing in Manitoba, it differs between state, it differs between mm. province big time. Gotcha. But Manitoba, you can't have any tread past the body of the vehicle. Okay. You can't have any tire poke, technically. Yeah. And there's approximately 20 inches of tire on either side past the vehicle. <laughs> We're giving no fucks at all here, bro. Like, absolutely zero. <laughs> but it's silly because... You're supposed to have that. You're supposed to have mud flats because they think you're going to fling stones and crack everyone's windshields, bro. And it just, it doesn't happen because of the tires I have, bro. Like, if you've seen them, you can't pick up stones, you know? But, yeah, so that's a big thing. Okay. And then the next thing would be the bumper height. There's, like, there's stipulations upon the bumper height and the headlight height because they think you're going to blind people. Oh, and okay. if you get into an accident, they think you're going to kill somebody or whatever, right? And... Dude, I could I could argue points of why these things shouldn't be illegal all day long because mm. they're just logic fails mm. for the most part. You know what I mean? Because for the headlights, you just point them down at the ground. Mm. You just adjust the beam, you know? So yeah. it doesn't really matter how high they are. And mm. for the bumpers, it's funny, man, because I sit up so high that if I was to ever rear end somebody, like I would have to literally be asleep at the wheel, bro, because I can see 10 cars ahead. That's I know point. everything that's going on, yeah. and I'm driving something that's so valuable, that has so much money into it. Like, if I'm not paying attention enough to not hit somebody, bro, come on. Yeah. Mm. It's mm. all silly. But yeah, the bumper height's a thing. Tint is a thing here in Winnipeg. I, I know, yeah. I've heard stories yeah. of, like, it's just, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny, dude, because you can go somewhere like Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and they would never give a tint ticket. I talked to a cop there. He's like, yeah, we would never give a tint ticket. You have black windows. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, why is it illegal here then? You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's so strange. Yeah, tint's a thing. And, mm -hmm. dude, anything that's cool, they pretty much have a problem with here in general. <laughs> <laughs> Exhaust is a big one here. That's Exhaust. True. Like, yeah. oh, it's too loud. You got to have whatever. What do your neighbors think of your car? Uh, they all think it's cool, man. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no problems there. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. Okay, you live outside like, the city. That's right. Yeah, yeah okay, I don't okay. live in the city, so. That makes sense. Maybe if I had neighbors right next to me, yeah, they would, like, hear, gotcha, the, gotcha. They would hear the jet in the driveway, and they'd be like, yo, mm -hmm. shut up. Yeah. <laughs> it gets insanely rowdy in winter, bro. Really? Oh, it's nuts. Damn. It's the best. Do, do, you, do you enjoy driving it in winter, or do you, do you, like, keep it to, like, just the summer? Like, it's... So anywhere, right? that's a good question. Yeah, I've only had it here for like two months of winter. Okay. I was in the America the whole last winter up until March. So I only had it here for a couple months. But yeah. it's really fun to rip in the snow. Mm -hmm. And it's really good for content. You know, <laughs> yeah. going and ripping donuts in a truck that big is a great time. Bro. Okay. It's great. Nice. Nice. I got I to gotta ask you a question because I, I, I want to get your take on it. Uh, thoughts on the Cybertruck? Dude, I think it's insane. Yeah. Hey? It's viral as absolute fuck mm. and i plan on having a chrome gold one one day for sure <laughs> it's just a given man mm. what about the electric side of it though because you, you come from a diesel man you're a diesel right. man you know ripping and riding i think it's disappointing dude mm. because you're driving it and sure it may be really fast put you back in your seat but you don't you, there's no music 
Yeah. There's no music to your ears, man. The best part about every vehicle that I own is how good it sounds when you mash on the gas. Mm -hmm. And it never gets old, dude. It never gets old. Like, the sound of your vehicle, I'm sure you can relate, bro. Yep. You're just like, shit, that sounds so good every single time. And to not have that and just for it to be a quiet ride, yep. dude. There's many times I'll just, suck. no music. No music. Don't need music. You have to roll the, roll, roll the windows down. Throw the roof off. Like, Yo, straight up, man. That's the sound that you want to hear. It's the best, dude. And then when yeah. you get a diesel, mm -hmm. you have the exhaust, and now you have the turbo noises, too. Yeah, I've never had a diesel, so I can't. I can't but I, I guess. <laughs> it's the best, bro. Mm. It's like, it's just great, man. So, yeah, not having any of that with a Cybertruck would be disappointing. So, mm -hmm. I think what would be really cool is putting a Cummins in a... Dude, has somebody done that yet? Put a Cummins in a Cybertruck? I don't know. If no one's done that yet, someone's going to do it really soon because it's going to be viral as shit. Yeah. But I think that's a future move for that's, sure. That's smart. Yeah. Can you talk about the business behind the truck? Yeah, absolutely. What's the reason for, like, how has it helped you business-wise? And maybe break down the business first. What though, You talked about um, the lights and the accessories that you sell yeah. uh, along with that. Um, but what's the business as a whole and the, the motto and the model behind it? Yeah, so Adrenaline Off-Road is the business you're talking about, right? Yes. Yeah, so that's aftermarket truck accessories, mainly lighting accessories, accent lighting, rock lights, wheel lights, the stars in the roof that you see on a on a Rolls Royce. Yeah. We manufacture those kits, install them in the truck, stuff like that. It's a really big thing. Nice. So that's our that's our main area of expertise and stuff that we make mm -hmm. and market. And the whole idea with the truck was all right, not only this is my dream truck, but I own this company of truck accessories. So I'm gonna build this truck install every product we have on it, mm -hmm. showcase it, and make it go viral, right? Yeah. And one of the things I did is rock lights, for example. Most people install probably 12 of them. And since we manufacture them and I have this crazy truck, I installed 120 of them underneath the truck, which as far as I'm concerned was a world record. Yeah. And, dude, I had a bunch of videos go viral just because this guy's putting 120 rock lights on his truck, right? <laughs> so I would leverage it in different ways like that Mm. to bring more awareness to the company gotcha. and obviously it has adrenaline off-road and big letters all over the truck you know mm -hmm. and it's very controversial because they see people see this truck on the internet that they think only goes on pavement has adrenaline off-road on the side of it it triggers people yeah and it makes people comment more and it just makes everything blow up that much more so it's kind of like a big recipe for mm -hmm. for virality yeah but yeah that's the whole foundation of the business essentially is just the lighting accessories and mm -hmm. installing them on the truck to market it was the yeah. the main idea you mentioned that like the idea of starting the business came from you know your friend is saying that you should leverage the audience that you had was the business world new to you and what was something that in the business world that you've realized that you may not have realized in the content world because there's one thing to be a content creator and there to hone that skill and to figure out you know what goes viral that secret sauce that you know you have and that many many people you know strive to have yeah um but then running a business and running the logistics behind that, you know, small things like payroll or logistics or manufacture, shipping, all that sort of things. Was that side new to you? And how did you figure that side out? Yeah, it was absolutely new to me, man. And I did have a mentor from the very beginning and he, his name is Alex Drysdale. He had a company for, he had an e-com business mm -hmm. for Cricket Pro Team. Okay. And man, I met with this guy after I started the company and he gave me so much good insight mm -hmm. and i was clueless on a whole bunch of shit he's like bro you got to do this like that you should do this that 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 kind of thing yeah. and it saved me a lot of time in the beginning bro having somebody that's done what you're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. it's so it's such easy advice but so many people overlook it and try to reinvent shit when you could just find somebody that's done exactly what you're trying to do yeah. learn from them save a whole bunch of time mm -hmm. so having that mentor around me really helped for sure in the beginning and then it was just a matter of leveraging the internet, man. Like, we have all the information we could ever need at our fingertips. You know what I mean? So, you know, if I'm trying to figure out how to get more conversions on a product page, yeah, yeah. I would just Google it and read articles. You know yeah. what I mean? Learn shit and then apply it and, and test it. The biggest thing with the business is testing. Mm. You have to test so much shit and always be testing different shit mm -hmm. and find what works apply it and then test new things mm -hmm. that's a very big part of it and there's no right or wrong answer a lot of times and it is just a matter of fucking around and finding out you yeah. know what i mean I, I think i think just you mentioning this right now it also plays a very like almost direct correlation to the content world as well where if you put out your first video you test it you see what goes right you see what goes wrong hey this hook worked well so I'm going to try this. This format worked well. This type of content worked well. So I'm going to try that again. And having that resiliency of like, 
not giving up after the first time or after the first one month when sales don't go well or something, you know, are not <laughs> the conversions are going or you have so many people coming to your sites, but people aren't buying or they're yeah. left in the carts or whatever it may be. Like the, can you talk about the mindset again, going back to like that translates over to almost everything you do. Did you say? Yeah. There's a lot of similarities mm -hmm. in things for sure. And for core principles, you know, like yeah. you said, the testing and that's a perfect example. The content bro mm -hmm. is, it's a lot of testing and it's a lot of being consistent when shit doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And when shit doesn't work and it looks like it's all failing, having the mindset to say, okay, I'm gonna try something else. I'm not gonna give up, I'm gonna do something different. You know, like I could think back to, bro, like I had my best sales month ever. Mm -hmm. This was probably in 2020. Okay. And then the next month was the worst sales month mm -hmm. I had in forever. Walk, walk me through that. So what, what got you the best and then what happened that it got to the worst? I don't even know specifically what it was. I think a lot of do, it had a lot to do with just market Got and it. how people were spending their COVID money, mm. you know? But then for whatever reason, the sales just drop right, right down. Wow. And even now, bro, like we usually get orders every single day, mm -hmm. but then randomly sometimes will just be no orders for like two days. And you're used to getting a bunch of orders every single day, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there's just two days with nothing. And you just got to be okay with, just accepting that that's the ebbs and flows of a business mm. of a product-based business and not not freaking out not worrying when things like that happen and i think a big skill is stress tolerance around money okay. because you could look at a month and if the month was terrible or something just isn't aligned at all it's a matter of just focusing on solutions instead of focusing on the how bad it is mm. you know that's a, that's a huge skill to learn it's just whenever something happens just look for a solution and focus all of your energy and attention on a solution how do you fix it don't even think about the shit don't even think about giving up nothing like that just how do we fix it mm -hmm. you know damn there's in like in the business world like i'm in business a little bit and figuring out there's so many like like you said there's high months and then there's low months and it kind of just goes like you know a roller coaster for yeah. many of the times and there's moments in one's career that there's the biggest moment. So like the conversation we had right now, maybe getting the truck was the, was a very high moment for you. What was the lowest moment that you can remember and think back to? From what time frame? Starting when? I don't, uh, that's a great like question. When, <laughs> like since I started the YouTube kind of Yeah, thing? of course. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do with that. Let's go with that. Hmm. That's a very good question, man. <laughs> that's a good question dude i'm really good at framing quote unquote low moments mm. and turning it into a positive mm. and not not letting it fuck with me do you have an example yeah man just yeah, last weekend bro perfect example <laughs> driving to america with the golden cummins and it literally exploded on the highway exploded dude like everything metal all over the world everything's crazy metal hit a car it was just tra it was terrible terrible were you terrified Dude, I like, knew it was coming. Really? Yeah, I could feel something oh, was wrong yeah. with the truck. But see, you don't. Sometimes you don't know what's wrong, and you look at a bunch of different shit. You still don't know what's wrong, and then you yeah. just gotta drive around and fuck around and find out. <laughs> but yeah, dude, the truck exploded on the freaking highway, and you know, most people would be like, a lot of people would be disappointed. They'd be pissed off. They'd be like swearing and be like, "Fuck, man! Like it's broken! Oh my god!" Just freaking out, right? Mm -hmm. But there's something to be said about really training how you deal with your emotions over time mm -hmm. and being in control of your emotions, not letting your emotions control you. It's a hard and thing to do. It is, bro. But yeah. when you can practice that in a real situation like that, mm -hmm. it's the best. And immediately, I was just like, I flipped it. I'm like, all right, this is perfect content. I'm just going to focus on filming it. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I was done filming stuff, it's like, all right, what's the solution? There's absolutely no point in spending your energy in being pissed off about something or complaining that it happened or being like poor me dude it's just all your energy's just got to go into the solution mm -hmm. because otherwise it's just a whole waste of energy and, and energy is our number one resource man you know yeah yeah no I, I i completely agree and that's so a lot of people don't have that you know and i would say i'm also learning that as as we go to get the emotions out of that because to make a decision based on emotion is so difficult because you're so invested in, let's say, like, for example, this podcast or like anything that I'm doing, you've worked so hard to make it your baby and your dream that when it comes down to make a difficult decision, getting that emotion out of it is because you've seen it at the worst times that you want it. You want the best for it. Yeah. But it can be hard. How do you how do you remove that emotion? What's like, is there 
a process that you go through? Is there something that you just let it be and just be like, okay, this makes the most logical sense. I'm just going to do this. Yeah, there's definitely a couple different things that I've personally learned, man. Like when something happens, you can, there's two aspects to it. And one really big asset or one, one really big aspect of it is trusting that that's just the way it's supposed to be. Hmm. And that's just the way it's supposed to go. And dude, our minds are so incredibly powerful. Nobody ever really talks about or teaches us how powerful our minds are, but we can frame whatever happens to us in our life in any way we want. Mm -hmm. We are the only ones through mind that choose our beliefs and our perspective about life and the events that happen around us, you know, and, and in turn, we create our realities. So when something negative happens, it's just constructing a, an intentional belief in your mind that, okay, this is how it was supposed to work out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't supposed to work out this way. It was supposed to be this way, even though I don't understand why yet, or even though this seems shitty right now, this is how it was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Because what's the alternative to just believing that it was supposed to go that way? You're just going to be sour and bitter and, and mad, you know, like a lot of people are, yeah. or just identify with victim mentality and which so many people do and it just ruins their life. It just takes their sucks energy out of their life. Nobody wants to be around them, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. that's a huge part of it, bro. And then other than that, it's just observing your emotions, mm -hmm. you know, observing them and trying to observe them from an outside perspective. You know, don't be impulsive. Don't act upon the emotions. Take a step back and almost be like a third person point of view about your emotions. You're like, mm -hmm. maybe even talk about it out loud to yourself. Be like, I feel this way. Try to make sense of it. You know, observe and then direct your emotions in a manner that best serves you on your mission. Mm -hmm. So if you know what your goals are, you know what you're trying to accomplish, then you know acting a certain way is not going to benefit you or help you in that situation, right? Mm -hmm. To bring you closer to that. So it's like, all right, I know what my goals are. I know how I feel this way, but this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. and, and then and I admire that, how you frame that as, as well, because like you said, that victim mentality of like, if things are going wrong and they continue to go wrong, to step back and say, I gotta just keep putting in my inputs. I gotta put my inputs, something else is gonna come out of it. What, what would you say to the people who are stuck in that rut? Or like, a lot of things are going wrong for them. Maybe things aren't working out at home or something's going on, they lost a job or something's going on. That as much as they want to achieve the greatest things in the world, they just feel like everything's against them in right. that current moment. Right. Man, it all starts with changing that belief. And obviously, it's going to be hard to change a belief when your outside circumstances don't reflect that belief. Mm -hmm. But it's so freaking true, man, that everything starts within. Your inner world is your outer world, and it becomes your outer world. So if inside somebody has that belief that everything's not going my way, everything's just, oh, I just can't get momentum, even them saying that out loud to somebody is putting that out there. It's projecting that out there, man. And mm -hmm. everything in this world is energy, right? Everyone knows that. We're taught that in science class. Everything's atoms. Apparently, this couch is atoms, right? It's protons and yeah. electrons or whatever. So everything in this world is energy, right? And you putting out those words, that vibrates at a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. And that's a low vibration frequency. And what are you going to track back to yourself? from projecting your inner world of low vibration out into the outer world, you're gonna attract back exactly where that vibration is. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you can start, even just in the littlest way, to change the way you say things, like let's say there's somebody who's really down on their situation, really down on their life, things aren't going the way they want, if they can start to just catch themselves saying certain things, mm -hmm. and just stop saying like, oh, this isn't working out for me, and just, if they could say, I think this is going to work out for me. That mm -hmm. starts to raise the vibration, right? And they're like a beacon and they're going to attract what they put out. So as soon as they can start elevating that, start changing the way they say things, then all of a sudden their, their beliefs are going to change about themselves and their lives. Mm -hmm. And dude, I've seen this proven time and time again in my life, man. Mm -hmm. This is literally how the world works. It's insane. There's synchronicities that seem to happen that are unexplainable, but it's just energy, bro. Mm -hmm. Understanding energy and how the thoughts that you think, the beliefs that you hold and the actions you take impact the energy in real time. Mm -hmm. Was there a moment you had to tell yourself um, a phrase or something when life wasn't going the way that you wanted it to? Oh, definitely, bro. Definitely. Can you, can you reflect on that story or that moment in time? I'm trying to think of a certain one, bro. It's just like... Like, what was going on that, that you felt that I'm not in this place that I am now? 
where right. I want to be. Sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, re recollecting on recent events, mm -hmm. I feel like I've gotten so good and developed this skill so much that it's just not even a thing for me anymore. Like, mm -hmm. for example, there was this place that we really, really were set on renting in Miami, bro. And I started, I printed pictures off of this place. I had them on my desk. I was doing the daily visualizations. I was like, this is our place. This is the craziest place. And for the price and everything, the land, there was nothing like it out there, nothing. And I was searching for days for these places, man. Yeah. And we we're getting all this shit ready for our offer, to put our offer to rent this place. And then after all this work, he's like, oh, somebody else rented it. And dude, this to the point now where when I heard that, I'm just, it's like it wasn't even important. Mm. I just understood that it wasn't meant to go that way and it was just not important to me. Mm. But if I was trying to go back a little bit, maybe to like a few years ago when, when things were not so ingrained and as practiced in my mind set and it hasn't been developed as much, when something didn't go my way, a heartbreak or a, you know, a heartbreak. <laughs> Bro, that's a good question. I can't even think of it. All anything. good. All good. Like, but the, the whole thing is you learn from, you learn from them, right? And, and those moments have, have made you the way that you are today. And uh, the small inklings of taking certain moments from one thing and saying in, in a, a different way, that's the mindset that I think made you, you embody perfectly. And, and I think I think a lot of people need in their life of just almost like delusional optimism, but it's not even delusional because it, Dude, it's going to happen. Delusional <laughs> optimism. What you said right there, that <laughs> resonates so deeply with me. It's insane, bro. Yeah. And there's a lot of times where, quote unquote, delusion in your life mm -hmm. is going to benefit you more than anything. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. But yet again, it's just the average eye. It's society mm -hmm. putting that out there that, oh, if you're too optimistic, whatever it's a negative you know mm -hmm. it's just it's bro being if someone says me to me that i'm delusional i take that as such a compliment but yes i'm just like you're correct yes <laughs> and my existence on this earth is so much better than yours because of that <laughs> you're realistic i'm delusional exactly bro like fuck being realistic <laughs> yeah. everything about being real realistic bro trash yeah one of the worst advice i've ever received to be honest is someone be like yo it's not realistic Oh, I'm not trying to be realistic. That's, That's not my goal. goal. Yeah. Like, the goal is to not be realistic. Like, thank you for telling me not to do that. Like, Dude, it's so funny. I love that shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. Can you talk about the impact that this sort of mindset has on the people around you? Because it's one thing to have, you know, I, I, I resonate a lot with the, the way that you think. And a lot of people do, but a lot of people don't as well. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes it's the people I wish that would the most. Um, for example, my family members, right? Of like, yo, I'm chasing. I'm all in on this. Yeah. But to them, to the way that they were grown up or the way that they have lived their life, it's different. So how is has this mindset of like, okay, I'm going or going or even even to the point of building a team and having people who that work for you or work in your company that. If they're not on that same wavelength, how do you either get them there or what's that the influence around the society that makes it happen? Right. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. I think the biggest impact of all mm -hmm. that you can make is proving things with results, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can embody what you're saying and, and prove it with a success or prove it with making big moves, whatever it may be, yeah. that speaks the loudest to people for sure, first and foremost. But other than that, dude, it's literally just sharing how that knowledge and that application has bettered your life mm. and sharing that exact same thing with people you know like let's say you have a family member that doesn't understand what you're talking about then you just need to explain it to them mm -hmm. you know and just a lot of people are closed off and kind of in their way set in their own beliefs of course yeah especially if they're older in life you know mm -hmm. and if you're a younger guy coming to them with some perspective on life that they've never <laughs> heard of they're just not gonna fuck with it you know of course yeah but another thing that could help is saying, let's say you follow a certain person and they embody all these things, you know, and mm -hmm. this is kind of where you're learning it from. Then you share that person and their successes mm -hmm. with that person. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm trying to be like this guy. Look at this guy. This is how he thinks. Yeah. Because there's something to be said there, you know, like how could they, how could they talk shit when there's all the results and success right there in front of them, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I, I completely agree. And I've just resulted to like watch me 
<laughs> like, and isn't that fun. such good motivation though? yeah exactly like, that's endless fire <laughs> wanting to prove your success to somebody so mm -hmm. they can finally clue in bro like even think back to i don't know if you heard of mr b story like yeah. his parents were not with the youtube nope. game at all bro and then he was he was skipping school and everything and finally when he made like i don't know what was it like 10 or 30k a month or something yeah. he dropped out of school and he's like yeah parents this is what i'm doing mm. and then to hear that story now and look at where he's at it's just hilarious right yep no a, a great example of like i'm in this and i'm going to make it no matter what anybody right says. and i'm gonna spend my entire day i'm gonna spend my entire life doing this entire life. And like screw work-life balance who gives a fuck i'm here <laughs> i'm here to work my ass off dude it's so freaking true and mm -hmm. the biggest thing too is if a lot of times you will have a vision for your life and the things you want to do mm -hmm. but other people can't see nobody will see your vision no. like you see it yeah first and foremost right mm -hmm. and trying to make people understand and believe that vision is a lot of work mm. and sometimes you just gotta like you said say watch me yep. and then do the work and start showing the actual results because bro there's nothing to be said when the result is mm. present in your life yeah and especially in the world of social media these days the the hate almost or the the negativity is so much sometimes louder oh, than than the positivity. Oh, it's insane! And like <laughs> the internet is so. I, 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 you probably get a lot more than, than we do. Like, dude, I've bro, learned, the... I've learned so much about people and how they work up here. Yeah. Just from reading my content, just from reading the comments on my content, and putting out certain content a certain way, and mm. watching the reaction. Like, dude, mm. it's insane. It is so easy. <laughs> to emotionally control people with content, it's nuts. It's nuts, bro. Like people will write paragraphs on my videos. And I'm like- <laughs> And you knew that was gonna happen too. It's intentional, like, yeah. It's, in, it's strategic. It's absolutely intentional. It's very strategic. And they're, they're there thinking they're being a hater. It's like, bro, I just activated you to do that. Mm. You're a pawn on the, on the, on the game, <laughs> you know? <laughs> do you have one that sticks out? Or that, that you, I, I'll, share, I'll, I'll share, I'll share one that, that, that we did. Um, so two years ago, we, we were like in this weird vlog phase and then we did like a running in the park video right and one of us had to dress up as a reindeer costume as a result for failing right average re average retention <laughs> graph of like stakes at the end of the video right yeah and so we were like this is funny we think it's going to be funny but it's not going to get the views if we just post it on youtube it's at the end of the video people got to watch all the way to the end so what we did is we one of our guys so our steve who's not here today um he s sat in the parking lot and then we walked by and we almost like staged it almost in the sense of like only in winnipeg you'll see someone in a deer costume running <laughs> that got picked up by winnipeg wild and then a bunch of other places oh yeah and like there's so many people in the comments oh my god i can't believe they did that ha ha ha, ha. but like we knew that was gonna happen right. we knew that that was the reaction we wanted and that we were gonna get it we just needed to put it in front of a for our own audience and to this day i'm still immensely proud of that <laughs> but um it's good do you have a do you have a type of video or a style that you know it's going to provoke an, an emotion and you know that this is the way that i want to spin this narrative yeah so before i answer that question i just want to say there's something to be said about what you just said mm -hmm. you said it got picked up by that other page and yeah. a bunch of people saw it right yeah see that's the thing if you make a video and a thousand people see it mm -hmm. there might be one hater but yeah. if there's it's gonna multiply as the views multiply if you get a million views yeah. that same percentage is gonna be what i don't even I don't even know the math on that. Yeah, is that 10,000 haters yeah. or a thousand? Yeah. That's 10,000, right? Yeah, 100x. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. We got iPhone calculators for a reason. But yeah. dude, point is, it's going to multiply in accordance to how much exposure you get. And mm -hmm. that's what throws a lot of people off. They're not ready to have that amount of attention on their shit and that amount of negativity, negativity coming back. But it's literally an indicator of success. Mm -hmm. Primarily, I want to inspire people to be better and to be more in life. Mm. You know, so if I'm out doing some crazy shit off-roading my lifted truck, I want people to see that and be like, damn, I'm gonna go build a cool lifted truck and go do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's kind of my primary goal and where I try to focus the primary percentage of my content around. Yeah. And then doing the whole like messing around shit, being a quote unquote troll, mm -hmm. that's a that's a smaller percentage of the of content. And I okay. feel like it would be easy to get carried away and only do that type of content because that content usually does the best. Yeah, and people have been carried away in the past. You've seen like many like YouTubers go down that route and like take it a little too far. Yeah, they become Not just strictly an entertainer. Entertainment, right? yeah. Yeah, see for me, I've reflected on that before. Mm. 
you know, when I'm doing content and I'm like, what kind of impact, what kind of, I want to be a net positive to society. Yeah. And if, and if I'm just entertaining, being a troll all the time, I'm not being a net positive to society, bro. I'm not inspiring people to be better, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what this generation needs is people to be a role model and people to inspire them to be better mm -hmm. and kind of wake them up on what their own potential is, you know? The messed up thing is that inspiring content sometimes doesn't do as well as troll content. It never does. I, like, Dude, it's tough. And and that's where the cycle kind of almost rinses and repeats that you could post, let's say, 20 positive, like, inspirational stuff. But in order for people to even maybe even see it or a larger audience for you to see it, you need to pull them in some way. And so it's so, like, I don't know. Well, there, I don't know if there's a fix to it, but it's just, I would say, more entertaining, just more reactionary. Yeah. That, that inspirational content just doesn't get that that reach or that that thing bro it's so true you know it is so very true that quality content does not get pushed and i mean i think there's a couple reasons behind it mm -hmm. you know obviously these platforms their number one goal is to keep people on the platform yeah, right so yeah. if they if they if there's something inspirational dude think of how many people just operate in an instant gratification state all the time so if they see something that's inspirational then maybe they got to watch half of the video or to the end of the video to really get the full story from. Yeah. Too much attention, bro. They're going to be watching some guy doing pull-ups on a truck. <laughs> That's funny. That's Swipe. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's just going to... It's the attention span thing is a big aspect of it. But then at the same time, I don't think these platforms would even want to push that because mm. then people are going to become more powerful. People are going to become more capable. Yeah. They're going to become inspired. They may become so inspired that instead of sitting there scrolling all day, they actually go and start doing some shit. It's with that negative for their business. <laughs> exactly, bro. So if you're Instagram, why would you want to fire people up to the to the degree that they stop using the app, right? No, you don't want to do that. Yeah, that's clever. <laughs> I think there's probably multiple aspects going on. That's a good point. That, yeah. I never thought about it that way. <laughs> that's a very good point, the yeah. It's fucking rigged, bro, mm -hmm. deliberately at every level. <laughs> what's your What's your goal in terms of now? Um, on, I'll ask you in two, in two parts. What's the goal with the content? Is the content to you mentioned that having that net positive and having inspiring people like the kids that want those trucks or the yeah. the, the the men that want to get there? What or is the goal strictly to push an audience to the the business? What's the goal? Yeah, so I think the goal is it's both all in all, mm -hmm. but the biggest goal out of everything for me right now is to build the YouTube channel. Gotcha. The goal is to get to a million subscribers in a year from now mm -hmm. and just go all in on that. And see, there's a really big difference between the content I do for short form and the long form content. Yeah. The long form content on my YouTube channel, you can watch that and there's there's not really the, the whole troll aspect. None yeah. of that really exists there because the people watching that are there because they like that shit. Mm -hmm. They're interested in trucks yep. and all the stuff that I'm making the videos about in the first place. So the goal for the YouTube channel is to obviously blow it up, but then strictly just inspire people and this next generation to not only just follow their dreams and build their dream vehicle, which I did, but to just do what they want to do in life and become who they want to become in life. Mm. And I really want to wake people up on how much power they actually have within them to do these things and to be who they want to be. And that's why I try to incorporate a healthy amount of mindset stuff into my Instagram story post because with all this big audience coming in, sure, there's a lot of people who don't get it and don't resonate with what I'm saying. But dude, for those select people that watch what I'm saying, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I drop a bit in a YouTube video talking about some kind of mindset or or how I frame something in my life or my perspectives. And there's going to be those few amount of people that really pick up on that and for those people who are ready to hear that message bro that could change the trajectory yep. of their life bro mm -hmm. like i think of that sometimes i post something i'm like a thousand people see this there might be two people that really hits mm -hmm. and their whole trajectory of their life could change from that and that's ultimately where i see the biggest return on what i'm doing for just world as a whole you know mm -hmm. so that's kind of the goal with the content the biggest goal with the content i would say have you seen that in real life of like people coming up to you and saying, yo, you're, you're the reason I'm getting this truck or you're the Dude. reason I'm doing this. You're the reason I'm doing that. Lots, bro. Yeah. And I get lots of DMs actually where mm -hmm. somebody will be like, send, they'll send me a picture of their Dodge Ram yeah. and they'll be like, I literally got a Dodge Ram and modified it because of your videos. I'm like, that is so cool, bro. Wow. That is so cool. And then I actually had a, another gentleman at this show I went to a couple months ago and he 
built a huge truck mm -hmm. and he was like dude i i saw your truck he had this show last year and i saw what you were doing with it mm -hmm. and now i have mine <laughs> and i'm just like whoa this is cool and he was asking me all his content questions wanted to do kind of the same path i'm like yeah bro that's what i'm talking about you know getting people at, getting people fired up with what i'm doing to go make moves in their actual life mm -hmm. because you know the biggest thing bro that i've learned as a man if you're not on a mesh if you're not on a mission if you're not striving constantly for something a big goal whatever it may be if you're not progressing in your life you're never going to feel aligned mm -hmm. you're never going to feel fulfilled and you're always just going to feel lost mm -hmm. and so many men are in that situation of just feeling lost not knowing what their purpose is and that's exactly where the masses want men to be is, is semi-depressed and lost right mm -hmm. yeah no that's I, I completely agree like having a mission is for me mm -hmm. that's that's what gets me up in the morning exactly. like i will be bored otherwise <laughs> i'm like I, I will be bored i can't sit still for Dude, that's... like like what do you do i can't just throw in a movie and just chill like i hate watching <laughs> movies i just i three hours of my time and just like just seems like a lot of time to be throwing towards a movie dude unless it's a super good movie then i need to know beforehand but other than that i like how do you know right Movies, bro dude you know what bored that yeah. is such a funny word because I, can't. I, can't. I thought about this probably a month ago when i was talking with my friends i'm like dude when was the last time you were bored yeah <laughs> i'm like that's something that teenagers are bored yeah but as soon as you become a man and start striving in life if you're bored no Bro, you're not doing something right. Yeah, 100%. You should never feel bored. No. There's there's always something you should be doing. Exactly. There's always something you can do. Exactly. As well, right? There's like, not enough hours in the day, right? Exactly. That's how you should feel. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm like, yo, I wish there was a tiny bit more for sleep, but it's fine. You know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Straight up, bro. So, and most of the times it's just like, yeah, fuck it. We'll see. We'll see. You know, I'm, I'm only here for a short period of time, you know, in life. So I'm going to make the best of it. That's and I, and I, I, I hope that a lot of people take that, that route. If that's what they want to strive if they if they want to put put on for their family and yeah. provide for you know people like i don't know that's, oh, that's, that's the, what else do you do what else do you do in your life everything worthwhile yeah comes from that yeah otherwise it's just short term easy go easy come easy go exactly. gratification that means nothing yep. bro yeah and i'm willing to play this game like i'm willing to see it out it may end up horribly no problem I'm gonna will. I'm, I'm gonna play this don't game. Even say that. That's shit, true. That's true. That's true. That. That's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. It's going it's to going, end up. It, I know it's gonna end up well, but it may. But it's. I know it's going to. I know it's gonna do fantastic. But I'm okay with the process of it, right? I'm okay right. with the inputs I put in a daily basis of like I do this a day, I do this a day, this a day, whatever the outcome is. I know what the inputs are gonna achieve, but no problem. I'm and happy with it. And if you're willing to accept whatever fate comes your way, yeah. then that almost releases the pressure of the importance of it going an exact way. Mm -hmm. And when you don't tie as much importance to do something, if you're almost just so certain about it that it's going to be all good, that you don't feel like it's important, mm -hmm. that gives you the upper hand in life, bro. Yeah. Yep. What's your goal personally? Personally? Yeah. My goal personally is to become the absolute best possible version of Mitch in every metric, physical, financial, spiritual, mm. mentally, every single way possible. Just the, the man I most admire. And then once I became that man, then and only then am I capable to give my best and my most to everyone else in the world and create the biggest net positive for the world. Are you there yet? No, nah, bro. No nah. nah, way, but I'm definitely on my way and definitely... I'm somewhere up along that yeah. where I'm trying to head to and I can I can see the impact that I'm creating. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, dude, a lot of people try to invest so much of their energy and time into others to give them, you know, make their lives better and, and help them out. Mm -hmm. But they haven't gotten themselves developed enough, first of all. And that's a big mistake I see a lot of people do, bro. And mm -hmm. everyone's so worried about being selfish and this and that and self-centered. But you have to be, bro. You have to be, you have to get yourself up to the par Yep. of where like where you're really really somewhere significant and only then when you are good and you are feeling great in every area of your life can you give the best to somebody else mm -hmm. damn you're a winnipeg boy you're a manitoba boy <laughs> but now you're going to miami miami bro now you're taking over the 305 is that what it's called yeah i it. guess i better learn that that's shit. that's pitbull's area <laughs> <laughs> mr worldwide 305 yeah, yeah. Dude, the energy Miami. there is incredible bro I remember the first time I like just went to Miami. I drove by. I 
was like, I'm not doing enough. Like, I generally felt that way. And I was doing decent. Like, I actually felt like I was like, I was like, you know, business doing well, life's going great. I was like, um, this is great. And I drove over that bridge into Miami. Yeah. And I saw these. The South Beach. Yep. And I saw just buildings. And I was like, I'm not doing enough. Bro, have you heard of the Miami effect? No. no. So the Miami effect is when you go to Miami, you feel like such a small fish yeah. because you are that immediately and automatically the only option for you even being there is to level up yep. and that's what happens bro mm -hmm. you become a new person your environment changes and you set a whole new standard for yourself in your life automatically yeah. like when i went to florida last year bro, i went there in december i had like forty-five thousand subscribers yeah. and when i left two months later i had a hundred and forty thousand <laughs> like it's just when you're around that energy, bro, yeah, it's impossible not to level yeah. the fuck up. It's subconscious too. It is. It's not like, it. It's not like in your. Fa it's there, but just something about that environment. It's just like, I gotta go harder. I'm glad you've experienced I gotta, that. I bro. have experienced I've that. I've tried to explain this to people, and yeah. they don't understand. There's no way for me to convey it. The the best thing I can say is it's like an alternate reality. Yep. Legitimately. Yep. No, I 100% I agree. The only the only way I can think of explaining like. Yeah, drove over across that bridge, and you just see buildings, and you know that each one of those buildings in that part, like, to even be in one of those buildings, you need to have a certain amount of money, a certain amount of stature, and you, the buildings never end. That's right. They never end. Yeah. There's so many of them. And then you go to the beach or you walk the pier, and the boats never end. <laughs> and I'm like... Big yachts, bro. Yeah. Dude, I went over the bridge there. I seen this one house it looked like a castle and it had the biggest yacht i ever seen in front of it i'm like that's some dude just lives there yep. bro yeah he's just flexing on every motherfucker driving across this bridge every day yep it's badass i downloaded zillow <laughs> that, what's that that's the house app where you can see how much each house is worth oh really <laughs> yeah there's this place called Damn. sunset drive in miami it's like a gated community i'm looking at houses in zillow yeah I'm like i gotta get in and they don't let you in because the gated community oh i got a funny <laughs> story like, about that let's hear it <laughs> bro I, I don't even which I want I wonder where that one is because okay. I went up to it's like you go right over that bridge yep. and then you're still kind of on the bridge but you turn right to go over this okay. section there they sure. have some of the craziest house I've seen there it's yeah. right in the middle of the bay there and I pull in with the Golden Cummins uh -huh. and they don't even have like a regular guard at the thing they have a cop there sure. and I just pull up and the cop walks out of the booth he's just like this bro staring at my tire <laughs> for like 15 seconds doesn't say a word to me mm -hmm. and he's like oh yeah you can go ahead i was just checking out the truck have fun <laughs> <laughs> literally bro he's just like you're good bro damn <laughs> that was the best thing ever dude and that's what something i love to do the most when i go to places like that mm -hmm. is i just drive around look at the wealth that is there but the thing about these neighborhoods is it's house after house after house yep. this guy made it he made it he made it yep. all these people made it in such abundance that it just gives you a different perspective. It's like all these motherfuckers made it so big. It's like, why the fuck can't I? Exactly. All these guys did. Mm -hmm. Even like going to Beverly Hills for the first time, that's all I did, bro, is I drove around for hours looking at all these places. And I was just like, it's such abundance of prosperity of out there. Yep. So my question is, why Miami? So you're moving there. This is for good? This is like, you're there for a, a, an extended period of time? Yeah, so I have a, I'm getting a business visa. It's a five okay. year investor visa. Wow. So I can go there for five years and then yeah. keep renewing it if I choose. Uh -huh. But yeah, I went to America for five months last winter. Mm -hmm. I spent two months in Texas. I spent two weeks in Cali, two weeks in Vegas. Yeah. And then I went over to Miami and spent two months there. And mm -hmm. it was just, it was a no brainer, bro. Okay. Is it? All right. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you so much for coming. If you haven't checked out Mitch already, everything's linked in the description. And as always, like, comment, subscribe. See you next week. Subscribe. Peace.